way back to touchdown, and he handed me the ball. The new running back is Lewis Tillman, and tonight they go against the Philadelphia Eagles, coming off that five-point loss up at the Meadowlands last week to the New York Giants, Sam. Three definite areas, Al, in which they have to improve uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. One is on special teams. They made a couple mistakes early, and right away they're trailing the New York Giants 14 to nothing. Secondly, they've got to run the football. Uh, they ran for 78 yards last week. Not a great number, but it's even worse when you consider that Randall Cunningham was their leading rusher, getting 35 of those 78 yards. And then we come to Randall Cunningham himself. Even though he had almost 350 yards passing, he missed a lot of open receivers, and more importantly, when he was out of the pocket running with the football, by Randall's own admission, he was running to not get hurt. If the Eagles are to go very far, Randall Cunningham, as hard as it is, has to put those thoughts out of his head. Randall Cunningham hurt on opening day in 91, played the whole season in 92, only a quarter of the year last year. Mitch Berger, the rookie from Colorado, who is their punter and kickoff man, he'll put it in the air. And back deep, Curtis Conway. And it's a boomer, and despite the 30-yard line and a one-inch tee, that's nine yards into the end zone. Last year, that would have been at least four yards out of the end zone. Maybe more with the higher tee. Here come the Chicago Bears, offensively led by Eric Kramer, who had been on and off the bench in Detroit for a number of seasons. Signed him to a lucrative contract in the offseason. Tillman comes over from the Giants. Hodge is the ex Steeler. Graham and Conway, the wideouts. Gedney scored two TDs last week. Heck, the ex Seahawk, Ford, Spontano, Lewenberg, James, Big Cat Williams, the former defensive tackle, now the offensive tackle. Raymer to the air, checks off, and the pass is dropped at the 22 yard line. He looked one way, went to a secondary receiver, but Tillman couldn't hold on, covered by William Thomas. The Eagle defense with Joyner gone and Simmons gone. Fuller, Harmon, the Fridge plays against his ex-mates and Greg Townsend, the ex-Raider. Romanowski, the former 49er. Evans in the middle and William Thomas becoming a big play man. McMillan and Allen are the corners. Eric, a pro bowler. Zordich, the ex-Cardinal. Jackson, the ex-Giant. So a lot of changes defensively for Philadelphia. A lot of changes offensively for the Bears. On second and ten, Kramer again, fires, sideline, catch made. Curtis Conway taken down after a gain of seven. The tackle is made by Mark McMillan. It'll set up a third down and three. A lot of people were shocked with Mike Shula sending in the play into the helmet headset for Dave Wanstead's Bears. People surprised that the Bears would go for Kramer, but they looked at tape and film of a lot of quarterbacks, of the eligible ones, and they felt he was the guy to guide the offense that Wanstead and Moore, Moore turned his brother Ron, the offensive coordinator, want to put in. Third and a short three, and the pass is too high, intended for Merrill Hodge out of the flat, so it's three and out for the Bears. That was rather an exhausting look, too. You mentioned they looked at the tapes of Eric Kramer. They looked at every available quarterback. They knew they were going to make the move as we look at defensive coordinator Bud Carson for the Philadelphia Eagles, but they determined Kramer was their man. And certainly he was had a very fine day in the opening game against Tampa Bay. Chris Gardaki gets it away quickly. It's taken at the 31 by Jeff Seidner. A flag goes down as Jeff, who muffed the punt last week, that led to a giant touchdown and was a very key play in the game is tackled after a five yard run back. Jerry Austin is the referee tonight. During the run back holding number 30 10 yards first down. Except there's no number 40. But somebody on the run back unit I think he meant Otis Smith number 30. Here's the offense now Randall Cunningham. In his 10th season out of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, an Eagle since 85. Walker and Joseph, the running backs, Barnett and Williams, the wideouts, Bavaro, the tight end. And up front of those five, you've got three number one draft choices, including the rookie Bernard Williams. A blitz and Herschel Walker on the ground picks up one. 
up to the 26 yard line. Ron Cox makes the stop. Chicago now defensively a unit that played brilliantly last season Armstrong Simpson Zorich and Spellman remember Dent gone and McMichael gone Cox Dante Jones really emerged last year in the middle and Wolford with Lincoln the corners Gale and Carrier are the safeties on second and nine James Joseph he picks only a couple up to the 28 yard line Dante Jones makes the stop and this is the toughest crowd in sports they're already booing the play selection well they know they can't win without a running game and I touched on it at the top of the show Joseph last week ran the ball three times for three yards Walker ran it seven times for 16 yards Hebron was the best of the ball carriers 10 carries for 24 yards well, that's Randall, Cunningham. <laughs> they cannot win if Randall Cunningham has to be their leading rusher they can't do it on third and seven, flags down. There was movement in the line. The catch is made. It's close to a first down. The ball is fumbled. Fumble. It is picked up by Chicago. Victor Bailey made the catch, and then the ball is picked up by the Bears, but Jerry Austin will tell us about the call. And this may all be academic because it appeared that the Bears jumped offside. Barry Minter came up with a fumble recovery. Offsides on the defense, the nose guard. Five yards, repeat third down. It was a third and seven. That'll make it a third down and two. You could see number 96, Albert Fontenot, come across the line of scrimmage, and he definitely got too much body lean and got in there. Boy, what a costly penalty, because this was clearly a fumble. Victor Bailey had the ball knocked loose. Danell Wolford came in there, jarred the ball loose, and a very, very big break for Philadelphia early. On third and two, Cunningham to the air, under pressure, steps up, throws to nobody. The closest receiver was Victor Bailey. Well, that could have been intended for James Joseph, but you're right, Al. <laughs> Randall opens up pretty much where he left off last week, and he was very erratic in picking out his receivers. Let's take a look at Trace Armstrong, the leading soccer for the Bears a year ago. And doing a pretty good job is Roderick Thompson on Armstrong. Armstrong was the leading sacker of the Bears last year, and he's gone from the kid on the block to the elder statesman. Mitch Berger's punt is fair caught by Tom Waddle at the 23-yard line. So each team, three and out, two minutes and 37 seconds into the game in Philadelphia. This facility, home of the Eagles and the like late great Phillies I guess huh? the way it looks in terms of the resumption of the baseball season seems hard to imagine but looks like the end is near mm -hmm. Chicago has it at the 23 yard line first and 10 no score 12 23 remaining in the opening quarter. Gedney in motion. It's the tailback Tillman. He picks up about four. Funny thing about Tillman, as uh, he backed up Rodney Hampton in New York, and Hampton is now out for about two or three weeks with a kidney problem. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood age for a crisp, clean, classic taste. Lay's potato chips. Bet you can't eat just one. American Airlines, something special in the air. And the all-new Ford Windstar, the future of minivans, begins today. Second and seven from the 25-yard line. Tillman again up to the 30-yard line. He's tackled by William Thomas. It'll be third down and about three. Tillman, of course, an unrestricted free agent coming here after filling in real well for Rodney Hampton at the Giants a year ago. Got a lot of people's attention. He's been around for a while with the Giants five years, and all of a sudden the Bears needed someone to replace the retiring Neil Armstrong, and they picked up Lewis Tillman. But his best game of his career were was against these Eagles a year ago this coming October when he gained 169 yards. Third and a short three from the 30. On a draw, Merrill Hodge, and there's the game's initial first down. He takes it up to the 37-yard line, so they have a new quarterback. 
new top running back, new fullback as well. And a revamped offensive line as well. One of the big problems with the Bears, I always thought, was that they were undersized. They weren't a big physical team on the line of scrimmage. Now with the addition of Andy Heck at left tackle, who's a 300-pounder, Big Cat Williams on the right side there, number 71, is 330. Lundberg at 290, Bort's in there at 290. It's a much more physical Chicago Bear offensive line than in the last several years. Hodge in motion. Kramer over the middle. He got great protection. And Jeff Graham, another newcomer. He, like Hodge, a former Steeler, tackled by Romanowski and Zordich. Up at the 50 and a first down. If there is a big question mark with the Bears, it still has to be about their wide receivers. Jeff Graham came over from the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was fairly successful there in his first three years. Has the size, has the potential, but he has not realized that potential certainly yet. On the other side, it's Curtis Conway, a first-round draft pick from a year ago. But the leading receiver, Tom Waddle, a year ago, is now the third wide receiver. So they still have a lot of question marks on those outside receivers. Tillman probes the middle, picks up close to five, takes it to the 44. Romanowski, the former 49er, makes the stop. It'll be second and five. Boy, in this era of free agency, no matter whose name you mention, you're former. always saying former something. <laughs> there are a lot of, there's a lot of Fs. You're either a former or a free agent. It's, uh, these guys have, well, of course, it's been an unprecedented year. There's a former Chicago Bear and still a household word. William. The refrigerator, Perry. And in good shape. Oh, he's been a big plus for these Eagles. He's improved their run defense in a huge way. And I mean that in many ways. <laughs> Second and five. And it's tipped and it is incomplete. Byron Evans tipping it. The linebacker. We were down the field earlier and we were talking to the fridge and what a nice guy he is too. He oh. couldn't be couldn't be better. I, and I looked at him, he is a normal. And I, I said to Dan, I said, how do you ever block a guy like this? You had the right answer. You don't. <laughs> you can't take him off the line of scrimmage. Uh, good play there by Byron Evans moving over in front of the uh, football. You look at the look at the center of gravity that William Perry possesses. He's out on passing plays, but on the run, first and second down, he's tough. Third down and five. Kramer, and it's incomplete. Good defense that time. Mark Cook, the intended receiver, and Greg Jackson, the former Giant, got his hand in there. One of the two new safeties for the Philadelphia Eagles as they, the Bears try to work Marv Cook into this offense. He had a couple of great years with New England and fell off last year under Bill Parcells, who would rather have a bigger blocking type tight end. But he is a good receiver, and you saw the play by the former Giant, Greg Jackson. Good coverage, but they respect Cook. They covered him with a safety man. Gardaki, one of the very best. His gross average has not been necessarily great, but his net average terrific. There's a flag down. The catch is made at the 16-yard line by Seidner, and Jerry Austin will tell us about the call. It could be a hold on Raymond Harris, the Bear rookie. Barry Minter of the Bears appears to be shaken up. He got up and went back down to his hands and knees. Out at the 50 yard line. That's Minter, their backup middle linebacker, I believe. We have two fouls on the kicking team. Illegal formation. The right side of the line is not up on the line of scrimmage. We hold it. Number 29. That penalty is declined. Both penalties declined. First down, Philadelphia. 29, Raymond Harris. He's on the left side of your screen in the wing position. Boy, he gets a pretty good hook on William Thomas. That's the one that the Eagles elected to enforce. It's that time against Chicago. Philadelphia went ahead and declined the penalty, even though. They're starting inside their own 20. Clear back at the 17-yard line. And Cunningham retreats on first down. The catch is made by Calvin Williams, and it's an 11-yard pickup and a first down. Donnell Wolford with the coverage. I'll tell you one thing, they show an awful lot of respect for Chris Gardaki, the, uh, the Bears punter, by uh, declining a 10-yard penalty and starting out inside your own 20. 
as Williams, who really yep. developed last year with the injury to Fred Barnett. He was the go-to man last week against the Giants. Could be that again tonight. He is does not have the blazing speed, but he has respectable speed and good moves and a good quick move to the outside. And Cunningham had it right there. That's Philadelphia's first first down. Cunningham, fake draw, buys time, goes deep and too deep in the coverage was good. They look for a flag and don't get it. Donnell Wolford, one of the very best, covering Fred Barnett, coming back after major knee surgery and looking very good. All week long, all the Bear defensive backs have talked among themselves. Follow the Eagle receivers no matter where they go because when, and there's a lot of contact there. Boy, a good right elbow thrown by Donnell Wolford. Boy, Freddie Barnett wants the call, and he could have gotten it. That's a risky play by Wolford, don't mm -hmm. you think, Frank? Oh, yeah, we've yeah. seen uh, a lot That's less than that call through the preseason and in the opening regular season first game. Well, Wolford's lucky he got away with that. That could have been called. It was subtle enough to get it by the officials as the catch is made by Fred Barnett. And Barnett picks up seven. And if you watch Fred Barnett through preseason and last week and thus far tonight, you'd never know this guy had major knee surgery last year. You might say, why do they keep going on Donnell Wolford? He is a pro bowler for a couple of years, a good man at individual man to man coverage. Well, he is getting single coverage tonight as they're trying to help Jeremy Lincoln on the other side. And that's where they are going to go until they get some kind of help on from the part of Wolford. Now your going points, the, the single coverage. Your point's well made about Barnett. I can't recall ever seeing a guy come back from major surgery looking so good so quickly. On third and two out of a double tight end set, that's Maurice Johnson, one of the two tight ends. Flag is down. Enough clearly for a first down. Lincoln to tackle, but a marker down. 7.22 to go. First quarter, no score. When you play. Number 84. Whoa, the offensive offense. interference. 10 yards. Repeat third down. The other tight end, that's Mark Bavaro. I think Bavaro that time was working against Ron Cox, the outside linebacker for the Chicago Bears. And you cannot push off, you can't make contact when the ball is in the air if you're an offensive guy or a defensive guy. And that time Bavaro got caught. Third down at 12, 7.09 remaining. First quarter, no score. Herschel Walker aligns in the slot to the left. Cunningham looking, and the catch is made by Herschel Walker. And he is down initially. The contact was made. They'll stop him at the 48, and that's enough for a first down. And another flag is down back at the 20-yard line. And if body language is indicative of anything, this is going against... Randall's acting like it's Illegal going Illegal use up. of hands to the face. Number 90 of the defense. Well, no. First down. Randall Cunningham initially thought that was against the Eagles. He turned around and walked almost back to his end zone. Alonzo Spellman is doing battle with Bernard Williams, the left tackle rookie for the Philadelphia Eagles. This will be something to watch all night tonight. Take a look at it, the right side of our screen. There's Spellman number 90. Oh, and you can see he's got the left hand locked up on the face mask of Williams, and that's what drew the penalty. But that is a that's going to be a fun matchup to keep an eye on tonight. From the 48-yard line, fake screen one way, set it up the other way. James Joseph escapes an initial tackle and turns it into a big gain to the 33-yard line. Oh, <laughs> Eagles perform this screen as well as anyone in the league and Randall Cunningham is the very best at it the fake screen to the left they did it against the Giants had the same kind of success that look at Spellman again there he is against Williams now look he gets a good the good lean and gets underneath and Williams really did a nice job of not drawing the hole he used his body weight to press Spellman into the ground and Spellman chases the play 25 yards downfield and almost mm. makes a tackle. A fabulous hustle by a defensive end. And what a good looking screen, however, for Philadelphia. Joseph breaking the initial tackle attempt of Cox to turn it into a big gainer. And Herschel Walker takes it to the 29 yard line. Herschel, three years with the New Jersey Generals and three in Dallas and change, up to Minnesota for almost three, and now three here in Philadelphia. But if you put it all together, it would spell something like over 13,000 yards rushing. What a remarkable athlete. Could have been an Olympic sprinter. 
an extraordinary athlete out of Georgia. Great physical condition still, and now they're working on Donnell Wolford on the sideline. Walker splits wide left. Herschel lines up everywhere. It's a draw play. It's Joseph making it to the 23. Very close to a first down on a second and six. Cox and Kane converge on the tackle. Eagles got a good looking drive going down around on their own 17 yard line. They got in trouble against the Giants a week ago with a couple of costly errors, a fumble, a misread by a cornerback, a punt return by David Meggett. They all of a sudden they were down 21 to 3 and they just never could come back from it. First down, Eagles. Boy, that's a tough break for Chicago with Wolford on the bench, Keyshawn Johnson in there. We're picking out one of the best corners in the league against some fleet wide receivers and that one is simply dropped by Fred Barnett. And you notice that they'll be looking for Johnson with this man on the bench if they can't get him back in. Cunningham with a lot of time. The ball was thrown back behind Fred a little bit. I'm sure Fred would have preferred it to be more in towards the body but you're right. That guy there at 25, Keyshawn Johnson, is, I think, about to get a good going over by Randall Cunningham. Second and 10 of the 23. No score, late first quarter. Cunningham, the catch is made. There's Barnett. Barnett working against Keyshawn Johnson. Oh, they'll find him. What they've done, they put Johnson over the right side, and they took Jeremy Link and put him on the left side. And I'm afraid <laughs> Keyshawn Johnson's going to be in for a long evening. I'm sure they'll try to help him with some extra coverage. He probably knows he's got inside help. He should have perhaps been outside a little bit of Bar on Barnett. He didn't. And Randall Cunningham delivers. Well, this is the area of the field where Randall has always been such a threat to take it into the end zone himself. He admitted he's been cautious. Let's see if he comes out of his shell a little bit. Up back, Joseph goes nowhere on a first and goal. You know, you think Philadelphia Eagles, and you think this man right here, Randall Cunningham. And then you would think about the defense. You think about Reggie White and Clyde Simmons and Seth Joyner and all the people that have been on that side of the ball. But what you really got to think about with this football team now is their outstanding core of wide receivers. With Fred Barnett and Calvin Williams and Victor Bailey, these are three real talented receivers, and, and they're going to be good for a long time. That guy right there, Fred Barnett, went to the Pro Bowl in 92, and... We're all in shock at how good he looks coming back from knee surgery. Eagles take a timeout. It'll be second and goal. 3.23 left. Opening quarter. No score. There are good reasons. Zeke Bradkowski is the offensive coordinator. Rich Kotite, the head coach. They each know how difficult it's been for this team to put it in on the ground. Two rushing touchdowns over the last 13 games. Second and goal. Double tight end set. As you look through the face mask of Herschel Walker. And it's walked in and caught by Calvin Williams. Touchdown. Now he's the go to guy for the Philadelphia Eagles. Became an outstanding receiver a year ago when Fred Barnett was injured. And fine pass by Cunningham. A little bit of a fade. Kind of strange to go to a five foot. 11 inch wide receiver with the fade route but he did a good job on Jeremy Lincoln. Well Lincoln really didn't have any idea that the ball was thrown and as often happens the ball was thrown a little short. Williams reacted to it and Lincoln had no clue where it was. Eddie Murray the longtime lion who has been bouncing around boots it through touchdown Calvin Williams and this culminates an 83 yard. 11 play march for the Philadelphia Eagles to lead the Chicago Bears 7 up. For they have been looking at him on the sidelines. They have him on the cart and we thought they were going to take him off the field. We hate to ever speculate on an injury but that looks like that'd be a, some kind of a slight concussion Dan. He gives the appearance of someone who's disoriented. That's for sure. For Pittsburgher sends the kick to the nine yard line. Curtis Conway brings it back to the 30 yard line. Bears begin their next drive from there. 309 left, first quarter, 7 0. 
view provided from the Goodyear Airship Stars and Stripes hovering above South Philadelphia, corner of Broad and Patterson, Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia. And while we were away, Donnell Wolford did indeed leave the field. We'll try to get a report, a medical report. As soon as possible, we have a preliminary report of a possible concussion. And a good scoring drive by the Eagles. A lot of nice mixing and matching. Good work on the ground running the ball. Quality passing by Cunningham culminating in that touchdown to Calvin Wade. Now the Bears from the 30-yard line. Fake draw, and then the pass is incomplete. Merrill Hodge is content that he was held by Byron Evans, and the officials say, mm -hmm. Well, that was good penetration by the Eagles defensive line in particular Andy Harmon number 91. He really got in Eric Kramer's passing lane. Not so sure he didn't alter Kramer's throw that time. And good coverage by Byron Evans on the tight end Chris Gedney had a couple of TD passes last week against Tampa Bay for the Bears but Byron Evans one of the real fine middle linebackers in this league today for Bud Carson's defensive unit second down and ten. And they give it to Tillman who swings to the outside. Nice adjustment by Lewis who brings it out to the 39 yard line. Flag down again. And a penalty filled first quarter. Mark McMillan makes the tackle. It's coming back. It's against Chicago. Looks like a holding call against the Bears. And Dave Wanstead isn't seeing a whole holding lot go right. Number 84 of the offense. 10 yards. Repeat second down. Chris Kedney, the tight end, who is lined up at the wing. He's uh, the preliminary blocker there at the at the point of attack. And he's looking up at the video replay board, trying to uh, did I do that? See how bad it was. And all that bad is holding goes, but I mean it was right in the focus of the official. It was key to the play, and it threw the flag. Yeah, he got a hold of Bert Grossman at the very end and took him to the ground. Second and twenty from the twenty. And it's Tillman, and Tillman with room not past the 30, up to the 33. So they get more than half of it back. It'll be third and seven. Tackle made by Mark McMillan. Well, good coordination there between Lewis Tillman and Eric Kramer. There was a hot blitzer to that side. That means he's unaccounted for. He's unblocked. Bill Romanowski, you see, he's a free man, and that is up to those two to read it. They read it very effectively, and they get a nice gain out of it. That's exactly the way that play is diagrammed and practiced all week long. Good work by both those guys. Third and seven, two minutes to go in the quarter. Eagles leading 7-0. And a fumble recovered by Kramer. He keeps possession at the 31-yard line. But they'll have to punt. Fourth down. Didn't look like Kramer started to come out early. Let's take a look at it. No, the ball hits him right in the hands. The snap from Jerry Fontenot appeared to hit Eric Kramer right, right in the sweet spot, but it fell to the ground. Gardaki kicking, Seidner is back. Fields at the 35 and gets buried back at the 31. <laughs> you want to you want to be a punt returner? Hmm. Why would anybody want to be a punt returner? We talk about the return of Barnett from an knee injury a year ago and Randall Cunningham coming back from the broken fibula. Well, Jeff Seidner also in that fourth game against the Jets a year ago. He went down with a knee injury and they have all had some pretty remarkable comebacks from very serious injuries. I in my thinking I can't conceive of anything more difficult than coming up and fielding a punt like that with 11 guys bearing down on you not to mention 10 of your own guys running right at you as well attempting to block I, that is the highest form of concentration on the football field is the punt return from the 32 yard line it's Joseph and he picks up a first down up to the 45 yard line so an impressive beginning to this drive Anton Davis a nice block to spring him pretty nifty work in the open field by a guy that weighs 325 pounds big Anton who played right tackle for a couple of years has made the transition to left guard first of all he hugs the line of scrimmage he looks back and then what's he do he zeroes in on Dante Jones whack puts him right down there that's that looked more like fuzzy Thurston coming out there at 250 <laughs> rather than uh, 330 a minute to go in the quarter. 
James Joseph picks up uh, a couple. He stopped by Ron Cox. We haven't had Fuzzy Thurston mentioned on Monday Night Football in a while. Well, I like that's that. Just reaching back there to the Jerry Kramer days. That's darn right. All the good old boys. But right now, I think Keyshawn Johnson better gear himself up. Keyshawn, of course, replaced Donnell Wolford, and thus far, he's been the focal point of the Eagles passing game. Here come Barnett and Williams both to the one same side of the field here on the bottom. Second down and six from the 48 yard line on the ground. Herschel Walker is ridden down by Joe Kane as he crosses midfield. It'll be a third down and three and that play will come up to begin the second quarter. As the clock ticks down. First quarter is over at the vet with Philadelphia leading seven to nothing. And we're back with Monday Night Football after this message in the work for ABC Station. Bell adorning the top of Veteran Stadium. I think I jumped the gun before. This is the 24th anniversary of Veteran Stadium, opened in 1971. Silver anniversary next season. Third down and two as we start the second quarter. Al Michaels. Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, Veteran Stadium, Eagles on top by a score of seven to nothing. At the Chicago 48 yard line, three receivers set to the left. Cunningham goes that way, and Herschel Walker has a first down at the Chicago 38. John Mangum with the stop. Herschel Walker, the man who can do so many things for you, and Philadelphia takes advantage of it. They use him as a wide receiver, they'll put him in the slot, they'll use him at tight end. Use him as a running back. Remember when we first, uh, when Herschel went to Dallas, we were talking to Paul Hackett, the offensive coordinator at the time of the Cowboys, and he was talking about Herschel and his abilities in what Hackett described as out in space. What a gifted receiver and how well he always used his body turning the right direction. Where Herschel has probably slipped is in that area, taking the ball from the line of scrimmage. He doesn't seem to be the dominating ground attack back that he used to be but yeah I, I don't believe he's lost a step as a receiver he's as good as he ever was you know that year that he was talking about I mean he gained 1500 yards rushing for Dallas caught over 50 passes and then of course subsequently went to the Minnesota Vikings and put the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> on top and back into the Super Bowl with all the draft picks and they garnered from the draft trade. You saw that graphic. One of those 80 plus plays came last week with a 93 yard non scoring reception. A second down. Oh, yeah. eight, and this is Calvin Williams with a lot of space over the middle. And he loves to roam over the middle. He did it all last season. Takes it to the 16 and the first down. Fine concentration. That ball up in the air a little bit, but he was making sure he was coming down with it even though he got hit. He brought that ball, brought it into the chest, and a real fine effort. Watch Herschel Walker do something else that he does so well. He blocks. A good block against Kane. And good reception by Calvin Williams. Let him hug this football now. He knows he's going to get hit. The Bears better think about tightening down the hatches a little bit right here. They don't have one of the great come from behind offenses. From the 16, Randall's going to keep it. And he picks up a yard, maybe two, tripped up by Jeremy Lincoln. When we talked to Randall last night, he admitted to us that when he got outside the pocket, he was thinking about not getting hurt. And I can tell you from, and Frank, all our years of playing and listening to coaches, they always say, when you think about getting hurt is when you will get hurt. I don't know that Randall Cunningham can play this game any other way than the way he's always played it. And that is all out, take chances, and, and, and hope that the injuries he's had two out of the last three years were just fluke type injuries and, and not an annual event. Second down and eight. Great protection. He guns it. It's incomplete at the four yard line. The intended receiver was Mark Bavaro, and he was blanketed by Sean Gale. Oh, and Sean Gale timed that out beautifully. Colliding with Bavaro just as the ball reached his hands, didn't draw the flag, just great timing. No way Bavaro's going to hold on to that. Got a hand in there. Really a fine defensive play by Sean Gale. That pass could have killed somebody. <laughs> that thing had some. Uh, did not have one of your basic touches on it, did it? <laughs> that thing had some serious velocity to it. Big play for the Bear defense here. Third down and eight at the 14. They're already down 7 0. Cunningham retreating, protected well again. Who else? 
Jalen Williams has two touchdowns. Pretty good start to this game for Mr. Williams. Anyway. And that guy, too, Mr. Lurie. Jeffrey Lurie, the new owner of the Philadelphia Eagles, and an admitted unabashed fan of pro football. And a nice investment here, uh, $185 million worth and a dividend paid by Cunningham and Williams. And well-thrown football by Randall Cunningham. Good move as Mark Courier was the man on the coverage. Had pretty good position. Good move to the inside by Williams. Brooke to the outside. Reading it right with him was this man, Randall Cunningham. They're a hot combo tonight. Andy Murray tacks on the point after 14-0 Philadelphia. At the very beginning, that through the Wanstead era has not given up more than two touchdowns in any game, and they've already given up two in the first 17 minutes and 52 seconds. As Conway goes back to accept Pittsburgh's kick, the crowd is up at Philadelphia, literally and figuratively, because their Eagles have looked sharp on two drives and lead 14 to nothing. The Bears could use Conway here on a big return, they need a spark. And it's a short kick. Conway, 15-yard line, looking for room. Uh -huh. Nothing but white shirts. A trio of them, led by this, Derek Oden. This is a fired-up Eagles team. They took a lot of abuse after the loss to the Giants. They went through a tough week the week before their season opener with the salary cap. We'll talk about that a little later on. Go back through the history of the league. Ralph Jones coached the Chicago Bears in 30 and 31. In his first 26 games, his team's never allowed more than two touchdowns, and once that second on the list with 17 and counting coming into tonight. Chicago with the 26. Tillman. Uh -oh. And he runs right into Hello, Mr. Perry. Former Bear. <laughs> the Fridge. Uh -oh. Always has been and remains one of the more formidable defenders against the run in this league. Mark Ports, number 62. William Perry there did not get moved one centimeter off the line of scrimmage. How many years do you think they practiced uh, against each other oh. in the training camp, Dan? Oh, they're Over good here, friends. They've, they've gone fishing together. The, 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 he and Ports are really not just old teammates, but they're old friends. Second and nine, Tillman takes the swing pass and is tackled up at the 30-yard line, tripped up there by Romanowski. It'll be third down and six. Richie Kotite says that this is the best defensive team that he's had here in Philadelphia. And you'd think with all the people that they lost, but when you look at the quality of people that have, have come back in here, they've really upgraded themselves, he feels, at the safety position with Zordich and Jackson replacing Wes Hopkins and Andre Waters. He feels he gets a lot more range, a lot more speed. Townsend and Fuller up on the line. This is a good defensive team. And they're fired up for right now. Third and six. Waddle in motion. Kramer pump fakes, throws, tipped, incomplete. Kramer trying to find Waddle. He was in traffic. Finally just flipped one. Byron Evans, that's the second time he's deflected a pass. Bud Carson, the defensive coordinator, one of the best in the business. Couple of Super Bowls with Pittsburgh back in the 70s. Been around for a long time. He still gets it done. If you don't get close to the quarterback, stay active. Look at Byron Evans. Concentrate. He gets popped up at the line of scrimmage by Lewenberg, but he stays alive. He stays active. He's got spring in his legs and gets up and tips it. Chicago four possessions, and this is their fourth punt. Gardaki sends it down to Seidner, and Jeff Seidner breaks it into Bear territory. Seidner inside the 25, tackled at the 18 by Mangum. And Mangum saved a touchdown big time. Oh, what a fine oh. move by Seidner. Saw that little gap. That's the way you return a punt for six. Once you see it, you just throw caution to the wind, and you pop the gap, and he found himself in the open field. Well, talk about redemption. I think Jeff Seidner could be excused it. for celebrating because he felt that he was the goat of their loss last week at the Meadowlands against the Giants. Some blocking up front. One move. Two moves. He almost moved himself right out of his pants. 
had to make that move yeah. back inside because of Gardaki and Mangum was there. Yep, good hustle by John Mangum. Something He's surprised to see Randall Cunningham go right away for a big one. From the 19, he gives it to Walker, and Herschel bursts over the left side for a gain of close to 10. And that'll do. That run back is something that almost never happens with Gardaki last year. His punts were returned an average of 1.4 yards per kick. A fabulous mark, but that time a 47 yard run back. Well, the Chicago Bears haven't given up more than 20 points in a football game since opening day of last year. And they're in trouble right here. And they better find Calvin Williams, too. They're down 14 nothing here, and they're looking at 21 real quick. Second and one again, Wolford back in the locker room. Lofted incomplete. It was Barnett going to work on Keyshawn Johnson, who's taking the spot of Donnell Wolford. Randall wanted to go to Barnett with the same fade pattern that he scored with with Calvin Williams for the first touchdown. So overthrew it just a little bit. He changed that play, by the way, at the line of scrimmage. And as we look at Richie Kotat, he calls the plays. In consultation with Zeke Bratkowski, remember, in kind of a controversial move a year ago. After the fifth game, he took over and started calling the plays, and he is calling them once again. He consults with Zeke Bratkowski. There's Zeke, been around for a lot of years. They were together at the Jets before they came to the Eagles. And on third down and one, the Eagles, running out of time, have to take their second timeout. 9.32 left in the first half. Philadelphia 14, Chicago nothing. looking on and his Eagles looking good defensively and offensively third down and one they send the rookie Brian O'Neill into the game as a wing back on the right side on third and one at the 10 yard line O'Neill goes in motion to provide leverage and Walker picks up the first down he gets to the seven he's gang tackled there but it's going to be first and goal. about Walker when he gets into a pile up and we watched it for so many years the entire pile there seems to be a surge and it's always with his movement he is so powerful well this has become really a very physical Eagle offensive front again with Williams and Davis and Holmes and Thompson and Alexander a big physical team next week the Dallas Cowboys first of three appearances on Monday night will be there as they host the Lions Detroit Dallas Next Monday, first and goal, Eagles in the seven. They lead 14 to nothing. And very little room for James Joseph probing the middle for a half yard, maybe one second and goal. Well, the Bears had to be a little concerned last week. They won the game. They didn't give up a touchdown, but Tampa Bay did a good amount of damage, especially on the ground and especially through the middle. And it was easy to overlook it, but tonight there has to be a lot of concern to this point for Dave Wanstead. Tampa Bay actually outgained them. 304 yards to 270 yards. Just maybe a little more than just a little concern. We're getting wrong at the moment. Second and goal. Cunningham throws. The catch is made. It's backing into the end zone is Maurice Johnson for the touchdown. Style points. That's about a two. Effectiveness, a ten. And the coverage. About a one. Yeah. He saw one official not signal TD, and that's why for a moment it looked as if he was angry, but the other was right there with the arms up. The two tight ends, and Johnson was ignored in the coverage. Another magnificent block by Herschel Walker. You saw the end result of it as Ron Cox tried to go over the top. That's hey, get there any way you any can. Any way you can. <laughs> Another though brilliant block by Herschel Walker as he picked up the blitz. Ron Cox number 54 is going to come. He goes high and Herschel stays high and that is called finishing your man off. Eddie Murray finishes off the drive with the extra point. That's Maurice Johnson's first touchdown in three seasons and with 801 to go in the half. It is Philadelphia 21 Chicago nothing. It's really 21 to 20. <laughs> Perfect. Especially when it comes to cars. There's always the chance one thing gone bad will spoil everything. 
The difference is that at Chrysler Corporation, we're doing something about it. Through Customer One, our renewed commitment to customer satisfaction. Because while nobody's perfect, it sure doesn't hurt to try. Customer One, see the difference it's making at your Chrysler Corporation dealer now. So, what do you think? You look tough to me. You just don't see that these days. I'm impressed. I want those qualities on our team. You think we can get them? Let's go ask. Hey, that's Elliot's head scout. Could you come over here a second, son? Yeah, you. Is it show, baby? Could you turn around? You know if these sweats come in teal? Is that seam double-stitched? Do you like the way it flows? Looking for tough athletic wear? Get Russell Athletic. Get tough. Flexible. Flexible. Unsatisfied with his seat, Ed sneaks onto the field to get close to the action. Okay, okay, now. Three guys on the bottom stacked. On the bottom. Pyramid play is what I call it. I come around, the, but the guy on top vaults in a carnival-like way. Oh! I'm cramping. I'm cramping. Whoa! Whoa! Does your mouth guard taste like banana? That's security, right? I gotta go. <laughs> Next time, Ed should check the sports stadium map in the 9X yellow pages. 9X. More information, more solutions, more stuff. Saturday, Michael J. Fox is an ordinary teen. Well, kind of. Ah! Michael J. Fox is Teen Wolf, a movie the whole family will love on the ABC Family Movie Saturday. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Eagle. James Big Cat Williams down. You know, by the way, I think we should update the Napoleon McCallum situation. We had that injury, of course, last Monday, and everybody around the country saw it either on Monday night or later on and it looked terrible but in a sense we're happy to report they had surgery on McCallum's uh, artery the leg artery a few hours after the game he is back now in Southern California he will have an MRI on the knee when the swelling goes down but he did go to practice the other day to see his teammates he appears to be from what we understand in very good spirits and really wants to thank Everybody, he said he got hundreds of calls and letters and telegrams and the rest expressing their support. So yeah, good, good news, news here for Williams. And, you know, all things considered from McCallum, we didn't know what uh, we were dealing with last week. I guess that's as good as you can hope for. Yeah, and all you do is keep your fingers crossed that the MRI isn't going to show any more damage than uh, than you might expect for something that, that looked as bad as that one did. Maybe it'll, uh, maybe it'll turn out to be a, a pleasant surprise for everybody. Mm -hmm. Second down and 10 from the 32 yard line. And they run a draw, and this is Merrill Hodge up to the 40 yard line, and that's going to take us to the two minute warning. Two minutes left. First down, Eagles 21, Bears nothing. Found after they lost to Michigan, they'll face Michigan State, Alabama, Arkansas, UCLA takes on. Nebraska in Lincoln regional coverage 330 Eastern 1230 Pacific if the game you'd like to see is not in your region it might be available on pay-per-view call your cable operator for that information. Oh stop it. <laughs> Dan brought me the tape of that game by the way I missed it. <laughs> There's a Notre Dame right yeah. there Chris Orch. Mm -hmm. Of course Michigan beat Notre Dame last week Did in they? South Bend. On a last second field goal. Third down and two at the 40 yard line. And William Thomas had an easy interception. Well, he was thinking end zone. William Thomas was, that's exactly what he was thinking. Well, he makes things happen, though. He is around the football. He's not all that big. Mitchie Kotite liked him as a rookie he, so much, and he has developed into one of the fine. Smaller linebackers in this league. Good on the blitz. Good on pass coverage. And he was thinking six right there. He could have made uh, 28 nothing happen. That's what he could have made happen. Here's Chris Gardaki's sixth punt of the game. And he boots it away from Seidner. And it is down at the 31 yard line with a minute and 45 seconds remaining in the first half. From the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes Veteran Stadium, the Vet, as it is known, home of the Eagles. Norman Brayman owned this team, and uh, by the time he was done, uh, his honeymoon was over early, was Norman's, and the 
early 80s he was being vilified and pilloried in the press and elsewhere and sold the team to Jeffrey Lurie and there is the new owner of the Philadelphia Eagles at age 43 and Jeff we trust so far 185 million dollars the most ever paid for a franchise in any of the four major sports one thing about Philadelphia though they are allowed to change their minds oh, yes. <laughs> Before the end of the game, if necessary, James Joseph picks up two. I wonder what he thought last night, Al. You were standing there. But the first thing I said when I met him, Dan, was, "You know, if I had 185 million, I would not buy a football team." And he proceeded to tell me what a fan he was. Grew up in New England, a New England Patriot fan, a Giants fan before the Patriots came into existence. You're assuming, Frank, that was his only 185 million. His <laughs> <laughs> friend Barnett. Out of bounds at the 38. I'm not play. sure that broke the piggy bank. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's not. Oh boy, Jeffrey Lurie is his family has been in the uh, publishing and movie and movie theater businesses, and he too has spent the last few years in Los Angeles, though not as a resident. He was running, but now he is moving to Philadelphia. Grew up in New England. Grew up as a fan of the and tried to buy the Patriots, as Frank referred to before. Do you, do you have a problem with him renting in Los Angeles? Well, that's What's not that? a bad idea with an oh, at least with an option to buy. No, he's not a homeowner like I you. So, right. hey, a second-class citizen. Yeah. <laughs> Third down and two. He was saving his money. That's right. The other 185 million. He couldn't afford the down payment. <laughs> Flag down here. Jerry Austin indicating in a moment. There's a distressed looking head coach. Before the snap, number 89, false start, still third down. And the Bears did not please allow. Please reset the clock to 113. 113, please. In Dave's rookie season, as we look at Paul Tagliabue and his wife, Chan, and taking in the game tonight, mm -hmm. but the Bears did not give up three touchdowns to any team last year. Fourth ranked defensively and they have blown that right out of the water tonight with a lot more time left in this one. Third down. There's just up. coming with a three man rush. And Randall steps up to avoid it and then throws and waits and finds the open man and the catch is made by Victor Bailey. That hurts the Bears because now now the Eagles will get serious about trying to score some points. They do this of course because of Randall Cunningham and Dave Wanstead talked about it one of his defenses against. Cunningham they come with six defensive backs remember the Eagles have just one timeout left so they run the play as quickly as they can and Calvin Williams makes the catch at the 44 yard line out of bounds with 44 ticks left in the half every quarterback in the league is judged by how he throws that pattern the deep sideline pattern and it's hard to throw the ball any straighter with any more velocity than Randall Cunningham just threw that dart to the sidelines. He has got a powerful whip, arm. It it's, like, it's like a slingshot. It Man. really is. And one of the problems he's had this year and maybe throughout his entire career is maybe taking a little off. He's never been known as a touch passer. Was developing into that. But I think he's more concerned. We talked about earlier about situations like this. Two flags come in here on this play. Albert Fontenot takes care of Cunningham, but we'll see about the call or calls. Well, it's a good play by Fontenot to grab Cunningham. Cunningham, did he get him by a face mask? Randall was trying to jump back to the inside. No, this is going to be a hold against the Eagles. We have two holding fouls. Number 76 of the offense. That penalty is declined. Number 74 of the offense holding. That penalty is accepted. Ten yards. Repeat first down. Each of the tackles. Each of the tackles. And of course, the veteran, his gets declined, Broderick Thompson, and they hang it on the rookie, <laughs> Bernard Williams. Now, that's, talk about the seniority system at its very best in the National Football. How in the world do you decide which penalty you're going to decline here? Well, that's Spellman, and he is hogtied and tackled by Bernard Williams. Now, the one thing about Spellman and that low rush is that'll draw a lot of holding calls. When you get that low, you're giving the appearance of a guy who's being dragged to the ground. First and 20 now. 38 seconds left in the half. Randall under pressure. Escapes, throws incomplete. He was going down in the reach of Chris Zorich. 33 seconds left, and Philly on top, 21 nothing. Well, the corners are being pinched off on Randall Cunningham. The, the two bare ends, Armstrong and Spellman, are getting around the corner 
and Randall is not getting a chance to set up. Uh, Zorich gets the sack, but it's because of the work of Armstrong and Spellman in flushing him out of the pocket. Coming up at the half, Brent Musburger talks with Cowboy coach Barry Switzer. They're 2 0. Peter King comes along, and I'll talk with Bud Sealing and find out if there's any chance we'll see a resumption of the baseball season. That's at halftime. Second and 20. Cunningham. Over the middle, he finds the open. James Joseph. He takes it to the Chicago 42 yard line. The Eagles only one timeout left, and they are forced to spend it here. Timeout, Philadelphia. So the Bears, who have killed the Eagles through the years, but on the other side of the coin, have been a terrible Monday night team through the years, and especially so on the road. And Dave Wanstead watching his defensive unit give up three touchdowns for the first time in his young career. Maurice Douglas still jawing up a pretty good one with James Joseph. Rich Kotite, here's a guy who was in his fourth year, but you know, the one thing about Rich, you come in, and even though he did a great job last year with a team that was as banged up as any ever in football that I can recall, here's a fella as you look at the Eagles' record on Monday night at home through the year, second only to the Raiders in terms of consecutive wins. When you have an ownership change, you know, you're pretty much on the spot, whether you want to be or not. Well, it's, it's, it's quite normal and I think everybody can understand the fact that, a, that an owner at some point in time wants to make that decision to bring in his own guy as a coach and now in his fourth year for two of those three years that he's been here he hasn't had Randall Cunningham and when you look at his record you've got to say Richie Kotite has done a really darn good job of coaching this football team third and nine as Randall throws into the 24 he finds Calvin Williams. Pretty, pretty, pretty. First down, 14 seconds, and Eddie Murray can start loosening up the leg for a field goal attempt shortly. We talked about touch, Frank. There was some touch. Well, he had it on that one. One of the ironies of, for Richie Kotite is the fact that before the start of the season, when the salary cap problems uh, fell on the Eagles and they had to ask eight players to take salary cuts, he went to the defense of the players. He's never been known as a real players coach, but all of a sudden the players had a coach standing up for them and salary negotiation he missed a couple of days of practice defending them those are huge numbers for Cunningham tremendous and there's all kinds of activity in the end zone except oh. the flag Keyshawn Johnson was there he got tangled up with Fred Barnett no marker don't lose sight of that graphic we put up there a minute ago 250 yards passing in one half <laughs> You, you don't have to be a stellar mathematician to realize that's halfway to 500 yards. That doesn't happen very often in this league, and I don't know how that's not interference on Keyshawn yeah. Johnson. He is all over Fred Barnett. A lot of buffeting will be allowed inside five yards from the line of scrimmage, and he was trying to make it look like he's playing the ball. He was not. Now Eddie Murray, a 42-yard attempt is good. Out of the hold of Bobby Brister. Murray tacks on three. Cunningham a huge half. The Eagles offensively a huge half. The defense pitching a shutout. And with two seconds remaining in the half, it is 24 to nothing. Who's the score of that Denver Raider game? Uh, I was say, we haven't had one. We had a couple a years ago. You're going to recall the, how the Raiders came back. Was, it was 24 nothing. It was 24 nothing. It was. Yeah. Stay tuned. Do I win the stretch award? You <laughs> win the uh, the, the promo company award. the company award. Yeah. That's right. Now, Dan, you were talking about Randall Cunningham and the difference he makes for Rich Kotite, and it's pretty pretty clear through the years uh, when Richie has had Randall, he's 15 and six, and without Randall, 14 and 14. He's so such an extraordinary factor to this offense running and throwing the ball particularly in his first six seven or eight years before he had the, the serious leg injury the knee injury three years ago. I mean you never knew what he was going to do. We recalled one well, one particular play we saw here on a Monday night that we just could not believe 
Yeah, that was uh, against the New York Giants. Carl Banks came upfield and Carl Banks still doesn't believe it. No, delivered a shot on Randall Cunningham that would have knocked most people over backwards. Randall kicked his legs out, went to the ground, popped, didn't touch the ground, kept himself off the ground with his arm, popped back up and threw a touchdown pass. Berger's bouncing punt is taken by a lineman at the 40. Jim Flanagan back to the 48. The crowd on its feet. Their Eagles played a scintillating half. The Bears pretty dreadful. Halftime. Philadelphia 24 0. Barry Switzer, Bud Sheely guesting with us at halftime, so stay tuned. Into the first half, Monday night football. Philly up 24 zip, and back we come after this from our ABC station. Wednesday, Bob Veal is back for the race of the repairman. It's home improvement at a special time. Then on the season premiere, give it to me. They kick by Gardaki off the new one inch tee. Actually, a tee turned upside down, and the kick comes down to the three. Jeff Sider brings it out past the 25 to the 28 yard line, and we start with two penalty flags after a penalty filled first half. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Flying the low fare airline is just plain smart. Here in your run back, holding. Compact. Makers of the Contura Aero Portable Computer. So light and portable, you'll never be tempted to leave it behind. And ice brewed ice house. Ice brewed so there's never any watered down taste. Well, at least the Bears. On the Eagles opening possession of the second half are making them start inside their 10 yard line. Not much has gone right for Chicago tonight. Kind of a precursor to that was when they recovered a Philadelphia fumble but Philadelphia kept the football because the Bears were off sides on the play. Since then it is all gone bad. First show Walker breaks it after the 20 loses the football but after he was down no fumble. 10 yard gain close to a first. Oh, and we realize Herschel still has the great speed that he brought from Georgia when he came into pro football. He gets by one tackler and he could have taken that all the way. What a hole in the middle that time. Good work by the Eagle offensive line. And uh, there's a case where the numbers do reflect what's happening on the scoreboard 288 total yards to only 70 for Chicago. And I think we may see a bit of the Eagle running game here in the second half. Not yet. It's Barnett. They're having too much fun through the air. Well, that was set up by the big play to Herschel up the middle. But for a team that really would like to develop a running game, Frank, this is a good time to do it. Well, I, Randall looked that defense over, and he saw that Keyshawn Johnson, whom he victimized throughout the entire first half, was in single coverage on Fred Barnett, changed the play at the line of scrimmage. And poor Johnson had a tough first half and it could get longer here in the second half. Again, he's in the game. Danell Wolford has a concussion. He will not be back this ball game. And when you lose a Pro Bowl corner, things get a lot tougher in, in the back of the in the back of the lot. Second and three. Yeah, Herschel Walker well, that is a way out, loses the football at the 40 yard line. Scramble there. I think the Eagles got it back. Yep, they did. Hustling Calvin Williams, isn't it? There are three or four Chicago Bears around the football and a lone eagle in Calvin Williams and he comes up with the football. That's indicative of how bad things are going for Chicago. Herschel Walker carries that ball. He covers it up really well. It was Joe Kane who got the shoulder on it. But Calvin Williams with a superb effort to get the ball back. Looks like Mark Carrier actually had his hands on the ball and it popped out of Carrier's grasp. Right to Calvin Williams. That kind of night for the Eagles. Vaughn Hebron is in the game for the first time. The running back, pump fake. He's got Barnett. Oh, and he almost threaded it at the 30 yard line. Jeremy Lincoln just got a fingertip on it to deflect it away. Well, the same play that the Giants last week ran effectively against Mark McMillan and the and the Eagles. This time the Eagles go to work. On the Chicago Bears and boy that ball threaded in there nicely and nice work by Jeremy Lincoln of just getting a fingernail on that football look at that. Just enough to deflect it 
to where Fred Barnett isn't able to bring it in. Second and 10 at the 40, early third quarter, Philadelphia leading 24 to nothing. Fake screen, Joseph, who was the recipient, fell down, so he goes back to Hebron on the other side, who breaks it for a first down at the Chicago 40 to the 35-yard line. Boy, and did Calvin oh. Williams get a block. Boy, was there downfield blocking going on, and we've got a Chicago Bear that's still down at the 40-yard line. That's 54, Ron Cox. Man, was there some blocking going on downfield. Calvin Williams is having a Hawaii night, a Pro Bowl night, if you will. Catching the ball, he's recovered a fumble. Watching fan back, number 89. That's Mark Carrier. Carrier. Whoa. We're seeing a good old-fashioned whipping right now being administered by Philadelphia. Injury timeout. Two fabled franchises. The Bears have really taken the measure of the Eagles through the years, but not tonight. A 24-point lead, the largest the Eagles have had against the Bears ever. Talk about that was then, and this is now. Mm. From the 34, Hebron gets wrapped up. Jim Flanagan makes the tackle. Uh, Ron Cox appeared to be okay. He went off during the commercial, and Myron Baker is spelling him for the moment, and now Baker. We'll go out and Cox comes back in. He's fine. Cox was actually hit by Lester Holmes, the number one draft choice of last year, who got 20, 25 yards downfield making a block. That's carrying a load downfield. He goes over 300 pounds. Who doesn't these days? <laughs> <laughs> Hard pressed to find an offensive lineman that is. If he's not over 300, he's sniffing at it. Second and ten. <laughs> Barnett at the 25 breaks the tackle, picks up extra yardage. First down at the 18. Oh, the the Jeremy, Jeremy Lincoln tackle. Jeremy Lincoln who missed the tackle. Laying off, he didn't get the coverage or the tackle. And the Bears cornerbacks are having a bad night. Fred Barnett just really did the little shuffle, sidestep, and Jeremy Lincoln. Too much momentum going forward, too low to the ground, and Barnett puts a stiff arm on Sean Gale and goes out of bounds unscathed. Hebron. He takes it down to the 11-yard line. Well, since Herschel Walker put the ball on the ground, look at Hebron covering up. Well, that's the uh, classic example of how to protect the football with both arms taking no chances and still picking up positive yards Boy, this game isn't that hard when you pick up five yards on first down. Well, this has to be a very disturbing night for the Bears very comfortable with their defense even though they had lost Steve McMichael and Richard Dent they felt good about it coming into the season they're getting mauled tonight. Second and five at the 11 and a broken play and Randall just has to eat it back at the 12 yard line. And Randall wisely goes down. There's no need. And I think Randall that's himself saying, My fault. My fault. I don't think Richie's going to pull him, do you? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah, the Bears defense better find number 89. He's been running three all night. But if Buddy were here, who night. knows? <laughs> that was then, and this is now. <laughs> Buddy Ryan now, of course, the coach of the 0-2 Arizona Cardinals. Third down and five at the 12-yard line. And Randall stumbles and throws at Barnett, trying to one-hand it at the two. That would have been the catch of all time. But he's the coach of the Chicago, St. Louis, Phoenix, Arizona Cardinals. Those Cardinals. Barnett was open on this move. Randall got his feet in trouble back there. Off balance, tried to get it in. Again, they're working in front of Keyshawn Johnson. A nightmare for the seventh round draft pick from a year ago, Johnson, who's filling in for Donnell Wolford. And you can see the trouble that Randall had. Yeah, David Alexander, the center, got him on the right foot. 30 yard Eddie Murray attempt is just good. Just inside the right upright. Officially goes into the books as a 29 yarder. 943 left in the third. 27 to nothing. Quarter, what a night. Everybody having a great time, even. Well, a bear fan there. Yeah. 
Where's my get, pacifier? I'm getting a little tired, but this crowd. I want my binky electric tonight. The Bears need to stick their head out of that cave we saw them in earlier. Oh boy. Yeah, that cave this. normally comes along in December, not on September 12th. Berger kicks off. Conway from the 12 yard line. Curtis brings it back out to the 33 yard line. Derek Oden makes the stop. He's done a nice job on special teams tonight. Tomorrow night, primetime ABC, a preview of the new comedy on our own right after Full House and Roseanne Ellen and She TV. And then Wednesday, Tim Allen and Home Improvement sandwiched around the season premiere of Thunder Alley. All American Girl makes its premiere and turning point. The Wednesday night lineup right here on ABC. First and ten at the 34 yard line. Tillman about three up to the 37. The Eagle fans are applauding the Bears in attempting to run the football. Something tells me that call would have gotten a different reaction from a soldier field crowd. Mm -hmm. There's Steve Walsh, the backup quarterback for the Bears, as we see now in the National Football League, holding his helmet up to his ear to hear the call that's being electronically sent in to Eric Kramer. Set down by Ron Turner, the offensive coordinator. Kramer on a second and eight hits Merrill Hodge. Out to the 45 yard line, and he has enough for a first down before Byron Evans stops him. Hodge, good receiver out of the backfield, as he was for the Steelers for seven years before becoming an unrestricted free agent this year. Did it all before Barry Foster got there, leading rusher a couple of years for the Steelers, and relegated primarily to a third down back when Barry Foster took over. 24 to go, third quarter, 27 to nothing, Philadelphia. Great coverage by the secondary, and if there's negative yardage there and there's a little bit, it'll go in as a sack for William Fuller, and you can credit that to the defensive backfield. The Chicago Bears tonight uh, down on the field, some of their coaches were talking about the possibility of going to 2 0, being the only team in the NFC Central with a 2 0 record. If they go on and lose this ball game, you'll they fall into a pack that you don't see very often. Every team in the NFC Central will have an identical record. They'll all be one and one. Second down and ten at the 45. Tillman. About five. Funny thing about the Central, Dan, a lot of people think it's as strong a division as there is in the league this year. There are a lot of teams that uh, could win, that have been prognosticated to win, but through the years, the Central Division has never had a winning record over the course of a season against the outside division opponents. And that goes back to 1977 when the Central Division, as we know it, was created. 20 and 20 last year, they've never had a winning record against foes outside the division. Third and five. And it is picked off. What a night for the Eagles. It just keeps going. Greg Jackson. And Eric Kramer is left to take care of his own mistake. He's the only guy that keeps it from being an Eagle touchdown. Well, he looked right at the receiver all the way to his right. He was going for the slant pattern. Greg Jackson had inside coverage. He was a, not a, in a man-for-man -man assignment at all. He was just reading Kramer's eyes. Put that right in stride. 31-yard run back. Kramer looking all the way. Never saw Jackson. Jackson, not one of the fastest defensive backs around the league, but very heady. First and ten of the 25. 6.52 remaining third quarter. On a scintillating night for Philadelphia. The catch is made by Joseph, and there's no gain, though, as Joe Kane is right there. Second and ten. <laughs> Philadelphia. I wonder if Jeff Lurie probably feels as if he could have spent 285 million the way his team is playing tonight. 
Well, they don't all turn out like this. Oh, boy. That's <laughs> Savor it. Savor it is exactly uh -huh. right. Yep, there. And he's got oh. Charles Barkley up there. Look at that. Charles, uh, the former 76er, now the Phoenix Sun. There's Harry Gamble up there in the, the booth, the president of the club, and uh, one of the many VPs. They have a few. Herschel. Stopped by Dante Jones. Well, one thing you can count on, I'm sure the, the, the Philadelphia press or the, the Chicago press will, will really understand <laughs> the plight of the Bears this week, huh? As Dan said to Wanstead yesterday after reading all the clips, did you guys win or lose against Tampa Bay last week? Uh, granted, they didn't have a picture-perfect game against Tampa Bay, but uh, they were... 21-9. They were almost abused <laughs> by the Chicago press. And I... Dare say they will be abused this time. Alonzo Spellman came across the ball. And Mark Bavaro came up out of his stance. And Alonzo wants a clarification. He did not Nine make contact. The defense. Five yards. It's still third down. Now the call going against Alonzo Spellman. Now he moves first. Bavaro moves. But Bavaro is allowed to move. He's a tight end. He can get up and go one way or the other. But that's that rule that if Alonzo Spellman comes across and is in the neutral zone and forces an offensive lineman to jump or an offensive player to jump, that now goes against the defense. That's a rule change for 94. It's a five-yard gain for Joseph to the 15-yard line. For a first. Well, they're going to. The crowd wanting the Eagles little, little, little to go for short. it on fourth down, and they are. A little short. Yeah. Brian O'Neill, their big back, the rookie who goes a good 230 35, comes into the lineup. And uh, hardly a big risk on the part of Richie Kotai, <laughs> leading 27 to scratch. Oh, the fans love it. Oh, and the Bears have 12 men on the field. Yep, and they just get the 12th man off. Oh, and Randall was trying to hurry it up. Yeah. He was trying to run that play as quickly as possible to catch them with 12. They'll get the first. Jeremy Lincoln was in a full sprint going off the field. Our guys catch it all There's as usual. Here it is. Jeremy Lincoln there. Look at him sprinting to get off the field. And he just makes it before the snap of the football. Crowd loved the fact that Randall Cunningham picks up the first down. He wants it, shaking well, his head. He's got a pair of 300-pound guards in Holmes and Davis, both number one draft choices, a quality center in Alexander, and, and, and really good leg strength on Cunningham. Their quarterback sneak is a very effective play. First and 10 at the 15. I don't think they got that off. Clock had ticked down. Yeah. That was a good look at Randall changing the play and his offensive lineman and the crowd was loud even though it's a partisan crowd and the offensive lineman passing the play out and they just couldn't communicate quickly enough a week from tonight Texas Stadium in Irving it's the first of three appearances on Monday Night Football for the Cowboys this year the 2 and 0 Cowboys hosting Barry Sanders and the Detroit Lions. Sanders and Emmett Smith next Monday night. It's going to be something to watch, isn't it? Mm -hmm. First and 15. Herschel. Like, every time I look at Herschel, I keep thinking about three or four or five years ago when they questioned, among other things, his heart. His heart. And here's a guy in his 12th year as a pro playing on the punt return unit, setting up as a block, whatever you want him to do, Herschel's there to do it. Herschel comes out and says, I, I, I'll play linebacker, I, I, I'll play free safety, I'll run the ball 30 times a game, I'll join the FBI. <laughs> I'll box national, if you want. National security is, is something that Herschel will handle for. Second and 10 now at the 15. Johnson, the intended receiver, and one of the few times tonight pressure is put on as Joe Kane got in Randall's face. One of the few times the Bears have used the blitz tonight, and it was very effective. Randall hurried, 
didn't have time to deliver the ball. There were a host of Bears coming right up the middle. And 59 is Kane. Sorich gets through there with a good move. Uh, that's uh, that's nothing but a hope and a prayer by Randall. No chance at all. Third and ten, 250 to go. Third quarter. Eagles leading 27 to nothing. And Cunningham throws, and it's incomplete at the 10-yard line. Intended for Walker. Dante Jones is there. I tell you, that was a good read by Randall. Just as he was releasing the ball, he saw Dante Jones coming into where he could have had a chance to pick that ball off, and he just dumped it onto the turf. Randall having a good night. Eddie Murray comes in for a field goal attempt. Murray, who spent much of his career with Detroit, as Cunningham goes over things with Bratkowski and Kotite. And then Eddie has moved around last year with Dallas. Brister will set it down. It's a 33-yard attempt, and Murray bangs it through. Three field goals tonight for Eddie Murray. And Philadelphia extends its lead to 30. The big question is if the Bears score, will they go for two? <laughs> Stay tuned. Well, they are enamored with their Eagles tonight. And right now it's time for the Bears to show a little constitution themselves. Down 30 to nothing. It's uh, good, Dan. Thank you very much. Very, very, very nice. All right. it's, and maybe provide some fireworks. Burger's kick is taken at the 12 yard line, and Conway. Brings it back up to the 37 yard line. We have 231 left in the third. 30 to nothing. Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. It's the home opener for the Eagles, who stay here Sunday, and the Bears go home. Alonzo Spellman and his teammates will face Minnesota. At Soldier Field and Green Bay comes in here. Reggie White pays a visit. Alonzo looking very reflective on what's yeah. happening here tonight. Tim Worley is in the game to replace Lewis Tillman, the running back, and Kramer throws out to the 49 yard line. Picks up a first down here against softer coverage. Curtis Conway makes the catch. Randall Cunningham over 300 yards last week. Through the 1980s, a 300-yard game would more often than not mean you lost. Tonight, Randall, oddly, a, a guy who you would think would have had a lot of 300-yard games, hasn't had that many. It's the first time he's had them back-to-back -back in a 10-year career. He's had a couple almost rushing. That's right. He almost had 300 yards in the first half. It's the 10th time Randall's had a 300-yard game. Only uh, one per season on average. In the world, Takes it to the 44 yard line where Bill Romanowski stops him. Well, if good things can come out of a loss, what the Bears would really like to see is Tim Worley get some good work tonight. He was banged up uh, most of the time. He got a separated shoulder and it really has not had a chance to get a lot of good work. The former number one draft choice of the Pittsburgh Steelers had some well documented legal problems and has really. Now I think have, he's got an opportunity to really make things happen for the Chicago Bears. Tillman's a good quality back. Worley could be great. Here's Worley swinging to the outside. Picks up a first down. Here comes a flag from the field judge. Mark McMillan made the stop. And holding is the call. I think what the Bears are rightly concerned about in Lewis Tillman at his size and the way he runs, whether upright, whether he can be the man for the season. Carrying it 20, 25 times a game. Holding number 80 of the offense. 10 yards, repeat second down. Now there's Tillman, and he's just a, a shade over 200 pounds. Tough as they come, but I mean, Worley is up there around 230, 235 right. pounds. He can deliver a lot of punishment. You know, we talked about it in our preseason telecast of the Bears game. Here we are talking about all the Bear running backs, and we've yet to mention on the telecast tonight Neil Anderson, who has retired in one of the quietest retirements known to man. Really? For for the quality of football player that he was. Second and 12. Raymer shoots it out to Hodge and off his fingertips. What do you think of Neil Anderson and Walter Payton for 19 years? Seven for Neil Anderson after Walter retired after 12 years. For 19 years, they were the leading rusher 
for the Chicago Bears. We just didn't think about anyone else. Now they're they're looking for somebody. Well, this is an offensive teams, but more specifically, the offensive line nightmare. Thirty to nothing. Third and very long, a good dozen yards. Nobody has to worry about anything except get to the quarterback. Third and 12, and they indicate blitz, but back off a little bit. Townsend chases Kramer, throws back the other way, and finds an open Bob Christian. The backup fullback takes it to the 33, and that's a Chicago first down. Bob Christian out of Northwestern found his way onto this ball club as a free agent. Does a lot of things. And does a lot of things well. Played at McClure High School in St. Louis, and I guess playing in Northwestern and uh, then playing for the Bears, you don't even have to move. Huh? He might still be staying in the dorm. <laughs> First and ten at the 33-yard line. Be a great way to save a few bucks. Yeah. Kind of like Jeff Lurie renting you know, in California. Right. And the clock expires before the, the third quarter. Snap. Third quarter. End of three. Thank you very much, Jerry Austin. End of three. Philadelphia 30. Chicago nothing. Monday night football. Back after this word for ABC Station. For Dan Deardorff, and let's get an update from the field in Lynn Swan. Well, the update from the field, Al, is just what you guys are talking about in terms of the Chicago Bears. There is absolutely no life on that football team. With Philadelphia taking it to them early in the first half, putting a lot of points on the scoreboard and the injuries, there's just no life on the team, and that's hurting their attitude and ability to come back in this ballgame. Al? Well, they were out of it pretty early with the type of offense they've exhibited over the recent past. There's a little flip pass down to Jeff Graham. And as Dan mentioned before, when you fall into a, a, a 14 to nothing hole, as did the Chicago Bears, they may have a revamped offense. And Mike McCaskey, the owner of the team, helping to revamp it and remold it. But this is still a team not suited to come from behind. Sometimes, as a coach, and every coach has experienced a game like this, it just goes so bad, you really don't have much choice but to grin and bear. Second and three is Tim Worley. Gets stopped back in the line of scrimmage by the fridge. But this is an important quarter for the Chicago Bears in terms of where they go from here. You can't be mauled. You just can't lose your aggressiveness and be pushed around on the football field to the point where you've embarrassed yourself and you've embarrassed your teammates. Uh, Frank I know how it used to be I know when I played and we were in this position I had a few teammates you could guarantee a fight or two on the field it just happened because you're angry you're so upset that you're getting beat this badly that you take it out on somebody else in the, in the other jersey and the Bears have got to show a little spine here in the fourth quarter third down and three Kramer throws catch made first down Conway takes it to the 19 Conway keeps it alive I don't know what you're talking about Dan particularly we saw it tonight with the Eagles. They they took a lot of abuse when they limped out of Giants Stadium last week, losing to the Giants up there, and they came back to a, to a, a horrible abuse here in Philadelphia. Yeah, the game is lost, but come back, score some points, get at least something to give this man to work with this coming week, and say, hey, look, I know we got blown out, I know we looked bad early, but I'm proud of the way you fought back in the fourth quarter. Right, we didn't thank it. Right, Conway. Conway reaching for it couldn't hold on. Mark McMillan was the defender. McMillan with good position on Conway. You got to play tight when you're down around that end zone, and McMillan had good position. That was a well thrown football by Kramer. He had that right on the fingertips of Conway, who has good speed on the track team at USC. That one he should have caught. And you're a number one draft pick with all those credentials. You've got to make the big play. Somebody has got to make big plays for Chicago. People have been waiting for Curtis Conway to come around. He needs to get with it. Second and ten. And the catch is made by Graham. Graham gets wrestled down at the 12-yard line. William Thomas dragged him down. Good strong effort by Graham. He's big. A six at 6'2 six and 196 pounds and carried an eagle with him almost for a first down. 
a receiver a receiver from Ohio State uh, certainly uh, a difference from the old Woody Hayes era got some Ohio State receivers in this league that are doing very well Chris Carter that used to play right here in Philadelphia another former Buckeye receiver third down and two at the 12 yard line the Eagle fans want their shutout And they're not going to get it because Gedney makes his third touchdown catch of the season, but there's a marker down at the 19-yard line. Well, that's a bad place for that marker to be for Philadelphia, or whether for the Bears. And then I think Juan says expression kind of says it. And the second yeah. one, Pinard, repeat third down. James Williams. The big cat is not purring at the moment. Well, the big cat got whiffed at the line of scrimmage. Won an inside move and had to resort to a tackle. William Fuller beat him inside, and then Big Cat did the only thing he could do to keep his quarterback from getting hit. He just turned and tackled William Fuller. Greg Townsend avoided a shot at Kramer that could have also drawn a flag. Townsend pulling up. Two wide receivers back into the game now. He had the two tight end offense a moment ago, but Tom Waddle needs in the slot up. Top of your screen, dangerous in this situation. Third down and 12 from the 22 yard line, and Kramer for the end zone, caught by Conway. Yes, for the touchdown. There's a touchdown. Boy, you like to see him come back yep. after one he should have had. This time he make, made a fine over the shoulder reception. And a guy made a great throw. Oh, did he? Kramer did with a lot of pressure. He had an eagle right in his chops. When he has to throw that thing. And there was inside That's out coverage on Conway. There's Otis Smith. He's got the outside responsibility. He's got help on the inside. He's where he should be. Well, that ball it, was thrown perfectly as Miano steps into the picture, but that ball was thrown perfectly. What a nice little hesitation move there by Conway, Frank. He gave a little stutter step that froze Otis Smith, and then with a shifting of gears, he moves past it. Kevin Butler tacks on the point after, and it's 32-7. Little redemption here. No other quarterback beside those two. And Gabriel played for so many of his years right here with the Eagles. Yep. Mainly with the Rams partially here. I'm glad to see you guys do it to another school other than Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Last time you guys sprung a stat on me like that, it was about missing. Wait till we come back. <laughs> Fridge, good night for his unit. And uh, savoring the moment because he's going to take care of his ex teammates here. Interesting again, we, the people we said earlier, which you co-tied says it's the best defensive unit I've had since I've been here. They've, they've had some good ones. 30 to 7 Philadelphia and they can chew up some of the clock here from the 29 yard line as they begin this drive and Cunningham gives it to Herschel and he bangs his way out for a gain of about eight. Well, well getting a few balls tonight Al. He only carried the ball seven times. He has and that loss to the Giants. You know I was thinking that the, the new rules that have been put in the league has to be thrilled with what's taking place a lot more scoring more yardage the uh, kickoff move back better field position. The five yard rule being enforced uh, against the defensive backs and scoring is up. Normally, you, you don't want to make a knee jerk reaction to a rules change. You say, at least, you know, give me half a season, give me something to see whether or not it's really making a difference. But this is so apparent. Uh, thumbs up to the league for these rule changes. I think yep. they have added a great deal to the game. Second down and two at the 37. James Joseph picks up the first down. One of the rules that I love, I mean, I love the two-point rule. We haven't seen it come into play in either of our games. Funny thing, though, we, we talk to coaches as we go around, and there's a comparison of the first 27 games last year and this, so we don't include the, the Monday night game in week two of each season. But points are up, TDs way up, and uh, almost 2,000 more yards have been uh, compiled. How about people like Andre Rice? 26 yeah. receptions, first two games. Jerry Rice cracking the record on a week ago. And I'll tell you that rule that they are enforcing has been there for years now on the defensive backs where they can't rough up that receiver downfield. It's really going to make some different numbers receiver. Here's Walker for about five. The two point thing we asked 
Dave wants that last night. If it's the end of the game, do you try to win it with two, tie with one? And he told us, I don't send it into overtime. I go for two. I talked to Richie Kotai before the game. Richie said the opposite thing. The funny thing was, I think a lot of fans might wonder, what would the 49ers have done yesterday had they scored down by seven toward the end of that game with Kansas City? Well, we talked to George Seifert last week, and he made it very clear, I don't send it into overtime. I go for two, and that's what they would have done. With his offensive team, I can't think of a better offensive team in the National Football League to go for two with than the 49er offense. With all the weapons they have, plus the mobility of Steve Young, Hey, if, I, if I'm running the 49ers, I'm not so sure I don't go for two on every single play mm -hmm. yeah, from the two-yard line. You know, it still hasn't absorbed, been absorbed totally by the fans that, that this is from two yards, not from three yards as it is in college. You know, we also in talking, it's, it's true love is something really special. <laughs> when, you, when you look at the two-point conversion, and the effect that it's going to have here during the course of this season. Again, don't get fixated on it being the last play of the game. It comes into play throughout a game's entirety as far as strategy down the road. It's, it comes into play on the first score of the game. Randall on a third and one sneak for a first to the 46. And then I think it also, at the end of a game, has a lot to do whether you're at home or on the road. Mm -hmm. I think a coach is more at ease sending it into overtime if he's at home if he's on the road we've had a lot of coaches out like you brought it up have told us you know what that that's my best shot at winning the ball game on the road in a hostile environment to take my crack at it at the end of the game there it is so far three out of four successful on the ground but just five of 14 through the air and 44 percent overall successful thus far Keep in mind, it's only two yards. That's why you see it a, high, a higher conversion rate on the ground. Two yards isn't that far to go. James Joseph picks up a couple. 30 to 7, the Eagles on top with 8-10 remaining. Another thing for the Eagles offensive unit, uh, they should be getting Charlie Garner back, their second round draft pick. A fine running back who looked so good in training camp. He's been injured. He'll be back in a few weeks. Really a freak injury. Yeah, he broke a rib Run making out. a cut. Nobody even hit him. He was just making a move and broke a rib. James Joseph takes the ball to the 42 yard line as they chew up the clock. Sean Gale makes the tackle. The Goodyear blimp, stars and stripes, providing these scenics on a gorgeous late summer night in Philadelphia. Temperature in the upper 60s at the moment. Well, with the Eagles looking pretty solid here tonight, the Giants at 2 0, the Dallas Cowboys at 2 0, the Washington Redskins even won last week to get the 1 and 1. I I think it's safe to say that the uh, the NFC East is not uh, not ready to be declared dead yet as far as a dominant conference in its league. Joseph like a pinball gets knocked down back at the 44 by their top draft choice John Theory looking from out there state. John Theory the reason that Richard Dent is no longer a member of the Chicago Bears. Richard Dent's contract was still very much in limbo and in play with the Bears but then on draft day theory is available the Bears loved him they took him and immediately upon drafting theory informed Richard Dent that he no longer fits in the Bears future and Dent goes to the 49ers and unfortunately gets hurt yesterday uh, supposedly is going to have knee surgeries a scope and be out four to six weeks mm -hmm. Mitch Berger to punt. Fair catch is called for. And Tom Waddle dropped it and then recovers it at the 14 yard line. So the Bears will have it there. 6.09 left in the fourth. It is 30 to 7, Philly. Bracken and helmet busting this weekend on ABC. Oh, Let's tell you, Saturday college football regional coverage Notre Dame, Michigan State, Alabama, Arkansas, and the Bruins of UCLA escaping with a win over SMU going to uh, Nebraska. 64,890 in the crowd tonight at the vet. First down for Chicago with the 15. Kramer 
tipped and Waddle can't hold on. It was tipped over the middle. Waddle <laughs> hasn't played much of a role tonight, but through the years he's been talked about as a blue collar guy and underappreciated and undersized. And I said to him before the game tonight, I said, Do you have any new adjectives we can use about you? He said, Yeah, slow. <laughs> That's new. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Ditka loved this, loved this guy, even though they cut him two or three times, kept bringing him back. Led the Bears in receiving last year, but only 44 receptions. Such was their inept offense. Second and ten. Kramer going deep, and the catch is made by Conway, who is off to the races. And Conway with a touchdown. Well, we talked about the Bears. Could they build on something? That happens here in the fourth quarter, and a pair of Curtis Conway touchdowns look like a pretty good place to start. Took it away from one of the best in the business, Eric Allen. Eric Allen made a play on it. Good concentration by Conway, the second year, first round draft pick out of USC. Eric makes a play on it, and then no way that Jackson's going to catch him. No, just man coverage all the way, though, with Eric Allen. He just drifted too far to the outside and appeared to misjudge the the fact that the ball was coming back more to the inside and might not have been that respectful either. I mean he was playing that kind of casually two here. point conversion attempt coming up here because the score is 30 to 13. And Eric Kramer will try to make it a 15 point differential. Seeks the deuce, gets it over the middle. Catch is made there. Conway accounts for all eight points. And we had put up a graphic before the Bears had gone 61 quarters without scoring two TDs in a quarter. That's over 15 games. Yep. But a pair here, and it's 30 to 15. All right, Curtis. How tough it is to see. And right there, he gets whacked right on the helmet by Andy Harmon. And he looks like he got a finger right in the eye. Eric Kramer came away with a hand over his eye. And here goes an onside. Well, at least they're setting up for an onside kick attempt. Gardaki sends it down. It's got to go 10 yards. It takes a nice hop, the kind you want. And the Eagles haven't covered it yet. Looks like the Eagles had it yeah. two separate times. Yep. And they do have it. Yep. They, they've got it. Even, even though Calvin Williams was signaling in the other direction. He was saying we've got it, but he was signaling in the Bears direction. Was, took a page out of Jim Marshall's playbook. Yeah. That ball, that's all you ask for is an onside kick for the ball to be in play and have a legitimate shot at it. Good job though by Philadelphia covering it up. By your Cadillac dealers creating a higher standard. Lay's potato chips, bet you can't eat just one. Castrol GTX engineered for greater protection against breakdown. And AT&T, they help put your world within reach. The vet, Philly has the ball. 30 to 15 is the score. Conway, two touchdowns tonight, equaling his output for all of last year. Well, it sounds ridiculous with the size of the lead that the Eagles had, but it's a doggone good thing that they covered that onside kick. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bears uh, were only two touchdowns from either tying or winning the ball game with almost six minutes left if they would have recovered that onside kick. Speaking of a covering, uh, Conway's can't, well, never mind. You're incorrigible, that's all I can find. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, gotta buzz our friends out there. But the Bears coming up again, what, October? It's Green Bay. Eagles, we'll see you later, later on against the Houston Oilers. <laughs> As we get to know the Oilers. That spread offense of theirs. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> oh, you're bad. Second and five at the 42 yard line. Herschel. Oh. Oh. 41 yard line. Time of the game where you're covering up the football and saw Herschel, who does a good job of that anyway. He's put a couple on the ground tonight, but he's pretty safe with the football. Bears take a timeout to conserve some clock here. Five minutes remaining in the game. Now they've got about 200 uh, young folks here tonight, and they are part of what's known as AmeriCorps, the new national service program. And there they are. These are Philadelphians, along with thousands of others from around the country, were sworn into service today at uh, several events around the country. Tomorrow, they'll be in classrooms or walking police beats. 
earning money to help pay for college. It's a uh, program that Jeffrey Lurie, uh, the owner of the Eagles, enjoying uh, his debut as a uh, as an owner in a home game, very much a part of. Not in the foreseeable future, I don't think. Third down and four at the 41. The Eagles stay here. They'll meet the Green Bay Packers, who were beaten yesterday by Miami on Sunday. And the Bears will go home. The Bears will be facing the Minnesota Vikings, who knocked off Detroit. Third and four at the 41. Walker gets stopped at the 41 yard line. So. Chicago takes another timeout. They'll conserve a little clock here. The fans that still remain uh, do not agree with the Chicotite on that call. Well, they're a little vocal about it. They'll send it down uh, in the air. You know, the, the Bears go home. They've had some problems at Soldier Field because of uh, the overuse. They had a Grateful Dead concert. They had some college games that preceded their home opener. Let's see and, a segue into this. Yeah, right. We update you on some injuries. Uh, Dan talked about Dent with a, a torn knee ligament, possible surgery. Anthony Carter of the Lions, we would have seen him next week. He's out for six to eight weeks, broken collarbone. We talked about Hampton before, Rodney with a bruised kidney, so he's out for two to three weeks for the unbeaten Giants. And Eric Moore of the Bengals suffered a broken leg yesterday, and he is out for a month to six weeks. But that Obviously, the non weight bearing bone for Eric Moore would only be out four to six. The Eagles now will punt as the rookie kicker, Berger. You know, Al, getting back to that Soldier Field thing, uh, don't they also have a couple concerts this week, the well, Rolling Stones? They have a, a concert tonight, and uh, they likened some of the Bears did the playing surface last week to a municipal golf course. The Eagles will take a delay of game penalty and we'll see if for Chicago accepts it or not. It's when life is going pretty uh, pretty well for you when <laughs> when you start trashing municipal golf courses yeah. by saying that's all <laughs> tell the me about it. Yeah that's, that's a good that's, point. Yeah that's when professional ad athletes delay have entered the country game, club era. Offense is declined. It's well still fourth down one of my favorite columnists Bob Verde one of the real good guys of the Chicago Tribune had a wonderful line last week in the column he said with the Rolling Stones playing on Monday night there'll be more grass in the stands than on the field at Soldier Field. You think that's still true. <laughs> I thought it was a good line. They sure look good, like it. good enough to share. Fair catch called for at the 26 yard line by Tom Waddle. That ball definitely was higher than it was. Length vertically that far out distance it's linear length on the field. <laughs> that ball went nowhere. Trashing on Mick Jagger. I mean, senior <laughs> citizen bopping around there pretty good. I watched him on the MTV Awards the other night. Well, yeah. I don't think that. Little oxygen between. I don't think Bob Verdi was insinuating that it was going to be on the stage. I think maybe he was <laughs> talking about up in the seats. It's a great line. It is a good line. It is a good line. And the Rolling Stones tour, a huge success. Bears at the 27 yard line. They're down by 15. When they were in New York, a couple of friends of mine went to it, just loved it. Mm. <laughs> and the pass is a little underthrown and behind Marv Cook. Couldn't get a ticket, frankly. Your producer, Kenny Wolf, took that in, too, out of Giant Stadium. Got a flag here, and we've got. 95. 15 yards. 15 yards. Yard. Penalty against. 90 against uh, William Fuller. Shot to the head here. Bud Carson looking on. Well, you know, I mean, weirder things have happened. It's a 15 point lead. I'm not suggesting that the Bears could do it, but mathematically, with a two point conversion. Boy, that's a. His hands do hit the head, but that's, you know, William Fuller is being blocked into him by Big Cat Williams, the right tackle. That's. You can see where the call comes from, but I don't think in any way was that intentional by William Fuller. Three, eight, hot, hot. From the 42. Kramer over the middle, wide open. Cook, all of a sudden, he's at the Philadelphia 38-yard line. Is that Marv Cook's first catch tonight? 
for his second. That is number one. That's number one, so that's his first catch as a Chicago Bear then. He's gone to him a couple of times tonight. He had, of course, had that bulging disc in his neck. And they just had to wait till he got ready. He has great hands. Big numbers of New England before coming to the Bears. 4-10, but Kramer had to call this play without a huddle, and all of the play clock though is down to 14. And there is Cook again. He's at the 17. And uh, folks, there may only be about 20,000 left here, but all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the Chicago Bears are down by 15. 350 to go and they're deep in Eagle territory and yeah, we can see Mark Cook again until they cover him as somebody other than a linebacker he's just running free right down the middle at the 16 yard line Eric Kramer throwing and there's Cook for a touchdown Hello, sports fans. now it is a nine point lead the chart says if you're trailing by nine you go ahead and kick the extra point hmm. well what was uh, a celebration tonight and everybody has already left for home most of the crowd here we have a game three straight completions to Mark Cook who had a couple of big years up in New England before coming this year to the Bears as an unrestricted free agent here's Butler for the point after so the Bears going by the book yep. attempt to make it an eight point game right and they do well the Bears have one timeout and they have a two minute warning and we'll probably see an onside kick and Eric Kramer hooks up with his new favorite receiver. He loves those tight ends. Gedney two touchdown catches last week and would have had one tonight without the penalty and now Cook here. Cook had 82 receptions a couple of years ago in New England and dropped off last year when Bill Parcells came in who uses tight end in a much different fashion. Cook and the Bears are back in this one big time. Well no matter what happens the, the point Dan made early in the fourth quarter what about the Bears now do you just go in the tank or do you try to give yourself something to build on no matter what happens now they have given themselves plenty to build on. They okay, have laid could, a couple of foundation blocks here. Well, this is going to be viewed around the league too. I mean a two point conversion makes a dramatic difference and you have seen it come into play tonight. Well we're looking at a game right now where you need a touchdown and a field goal. Uh, to win the ball game and now uh, we are a one score game away from uh, sending it into overtime if the Bears win this there'll be a few million people who will wake up tomorrow morning hear a score and absolutely faint I mean a lot of people turned tuned out obviously 30 to nothing and went to bed and they elect not to make the onside kick here Seidner is run down at the 32 yard line and I think that's a smart play. Yep. I think it's a very smart play not going for the onside kick if the Bears can win and Austin uh, with another flag down the flag All is sides on the kickoff number 94 that penalty is the started to say decline that penalty is declined. All right. That's John First down Philadelphia. theory the the greatest comeback in regular season NFL history was a 28 point comeback by San Francisco against New Orleans in 1980 the, the greatest that people remember of course was Buffalo against Houston in the wild card game a couple of years back 32 points and this one well if, if the Bears somehow pulled this out it would be the greatest comeback in regular season history in the 75 year history of the National Football League the thing you tend to do if you are the Eagles is to get very conservative at this point. What they really need to do is go back and play this game the way they were playing in the first half through the third quarter. From the 32 yard line, first and 10, Philadelphia. Here's Barnett. He gets up to the 39 yard line, and now the Bears are going to take. They started to take a timeout. And that is a good, that's a good call by Zeke Bradkowski and Richie Kotai. Uh, it, it's really easy to get conservative and slam it up in there. Go ahead and throw the ball if they're going to give you that batter. It's a good call by the Bears here too. One of them started to call a timeout and the, another came in and said no not here. You don't want to take the timeout on second and three. And Barnett you know, your last time on that. Why is he staying in bounds. Yeah now the two bear corners have had to tighten up a little bit. Second and three at the 38. Randall takes a lot of time off the clock here is. Walker now you're at the 39 now you take your T.O. here if you're Chicago at third down 
And two, and that wants that's going to say, yeah, let's let's take it right here because the it's going to come down to the next play. Do you stop him or not? On third down, very good clock management here by uh, the Chicago Bears. Very good. To get, well, it's, it's it's perfect if you stop him here. If you don't stop, it doesn't matter. Well, I wouldn't say it doesn't matter. You still have an opportunity to gain possession of the football. I'm saying in terms of in terms of managing the clock, it was, he's, he's giving himself the best chance now to win the game. It was no argument. We, it was well done by the Chicago Bears. Now we have an interesting call on both sides of the ball. Now, also, if you are the Philadelphia Eagles, not a bad guy right there to have pulling the trigger. Uh, I, <laughs> I wouldn't be afraid to send him out on some kind of uh, challenging the perimeter or roll out one way or the other. And allow him to either find an open receiver or tuck it in and take off with it. They haven't done it much this year, but in the past that has no. been their MO. Anytime they got in this kind of a situation, give Randall the opportunity to either run or pass. A little short roll. Well, the Eagles can wrap it up just about here by converting on third and two because the Bears don't have a timeout. And if they stay in bounds, it'll stop at the two-minute warning, and that'll be it. Third and two. Long long to as Cunningham throws Walker makes the catch at the 44 and that is just enough for the first down tackled by Gale now we talked about the multiple uses of Herschel Walker a moment ago they sent him up the middle unsuccessfully now they put him in a slot go to him on the third and crucial three yard play and now they'll just take it down to the two minute warning and run it out and the coverage on Herschel wasn't that bad the hit got put on pretty quickly but that was a well run pattern by Herschel Walker and again we've talked about are there any diminishing of skills on Herschel Walker certainly not when it comes to catching the football he's still among the very best let's play weird numbers there well look how big a second quarter Randall Cunningham had uh, outshadowed though by Eric Kramer in the fourth with 186 yards passing in one quarter. Conway doing the bulk of the receiving. A couple of touchdowns, two point conversion. The big play that we talked about earlier, somebody had to come forward and make. Curtis Conway was there tonight. I know that Randall Cunningham had his critics here in Philadelphia, and 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 really Randall himself was was pretty harsh on himself, his performance last week against the Giants. Uh, anybody who's an Eagles fan has to be pretty pleased with the way number 12 looked tonight. A good all around solid evening by Randall Cunningham who is the heart and soul of this football team and now it's no more miracle at the Meadowlands. <laughs> Here they go into the formation to kill the ball. Yep, the miracle of the Meadowlands pulled off by the Eagles and Herman Edwards with the, the Sarchic fumble but and ever since then this uh, this formation with one of your players 10 or 15 yards behind has become the standard. The executive producer of ABC Sports, Jack O'Hara. Tonight's game produced by the Wolfman, Ken Wolf, and directed by Craig Janoff. Our technical director, Joe Shavo, Jaime Bravo, our associate director, Bob Simon, our production manager, Dennis Zabo, and Jim Licata, the tech operations manager, Fred King, Brian Gordon, the assistants to the producer, Steve Hurd, our director of information, Mark Amento, Brian Mobelson, Bill Monahan, Andrea Bryant, part of our Great crew stats up here George Hill and our spotter as always Malibu Kelly Hayes. Little Neil down there Rich Kotite and his team one and one as they await Green Bay Chicago going home they are one and one against Minnesota. Two matches tonight matches maybe for both these teams uh, the Bears could have rolled over and get went into their igloo earlier. They didn't. They fought back, scrambled back. Almost one of the most dramatic comeback victories we've ever seen on Monday night. I'm anxious to go to Big D. On we, yep, next week. I want to see Barry Sanders uh, of the Lions, and I want to see uh, our first regular season look at uh, Barry Switzer's Dallas Cowboys. And we will be there next Monday night. This one winds down. We saw the Pokes at. Uh, the Stadia Azteca, uh, we did. Mexico City. And they're 2 0. The Lions will be taking a 1 1 record into the game. Eagles 
draw away to a 30 nothing cushion and hold on to win the game 30 to 22 as this one comes to a close at the vet.